Hello and welcome. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Gargi Rawat. Stay with us for all the news you need to follow. Uh, we'll also get you all the latest on the Delhi mayor elections. Will it be third time lucky and will Delhi get the mayor? Also, five judges to be appointed to the Supreme Court. We'll get you all that and a lot more. Let's take a look at the headlines we're tracking at this hour. A third attempt to pick the mayor of Delhi and six standing committee here today. The two earlier attempts had failed amid clashes between AAP and BJP. Five judges to be sworn in to the Supreme Court today after the government notified the appointment. Intense political campaigning in Tripura from today ahead of polls. Mamta Banerjee and Amit Shah to address rallies and carry out roadshows. A Sam's child marriage crackdown to continue despite criticism of the manner in which it's being carried out. AIMIM chief Asaduddin Ovesi has demanded to know who will take care of the girls who've been left in a lurch. Our top story now, a third attempt to pick the mayor of Delhi and the six standing committee members is expected today. Two earlier attempts had failed amid clashes between the BJP, which controlled the civic body for 15 years, and Aam Aadmi Party, which has dislodged them. The election was stalled twice on January 6th over the question whether the 10 members nominated by the lieutenant governor are allowed to vote. And then again on January 24, due to sudden adjournment uh, by the presiding officer claiming non-order of the House. Now, while Arvind Kejriwal's Aam Aadmi Party will win the mayor post given its numbers, its situation will be precarious over the election of the standing committee, understood to be the most powerful body in the corporation. Well, let's go across to NDTV's Vedant now for more. And Vedant, so let's hope it's a third time lucky and Delhi does finally get the mayor. Tell us uh, what's happening and, you know, and uh, what's expected later today. Well, Gargi, just ahead of uh, the mayoral elections, which are scheduled to be held today uh, for the third time now, remember, because uh, first on the 6th of January and then on the 24th of January, the House was adjourned and, uh, you know, the violent political clashes that we saw in the MCD House. So, remember, ahead of the mayoral elections, all the elected um, councillors of the Aam Aadmi Party, they have collectively written to the LG-appointed pro-term speaker, uh, asking for the debarment of uh, uh, the older men, the debarment of the nominated members uh, appointed by the lieutenant governor. Because according to them, uh, the, the older men are not allowed to actually vote as far as the elections to the posts of mayor, deputy mayor, and six members of the standing committee are concerned. Uh, so, of course, uh, the older men's responsibility, according to the Delhi Municipal Corporation Act, is simply to uh, in a sense, uh, uh, be a part of the day-to-day -day working of the municipal corporation. They are not involved in the voting per se. Uh, the Amadi Party, of course, has continued to say that this is the BJP's way of influencing the mayoral polls, despite the Amadi Party's uh, you know, landslide victory, so to speak, in the NCD elections. Now, remember, as far as the numbers are concerned, the Amadi Party has a comfortable majority as far as the NCD is concerned. The Amadi Party has 132 wards, 132 elected councillors in its favour. Other than that, the BJP has, uh, you know, 105 councillors. Now, remember, even though the, the numbers are in favour of the Ahmadi Party, the fact is that the voting for these particular polls are a secret ballot. So, uh, you know, the councillors, in a sense, are free to cross vote uh, without anybody knowing as to which party did the particular councillor actually vote for. Uh, so, the secret ballot is what makes these elections particularly interesting, and it, al it also makes uh, it a prestige battle for the Ahmadi Party in a sense because. It's important for Arvind Kejriwal to secure 134 votes uh, in uh, the in the mayoral elections because remember the BJP initially said that Delhi will have you know an Amadi Party mayor later of course making a U-turn saying that it will contest uh, the mayoral elections because it's an open house. So it remains to be seen what happens today and whether voting actually takes place or not because remember earlier uh, it was during uh, the oath taking itself that the house uh, was adjourned because there were there were clashes. Uh, because uh, the LG appointed speaker actually asked uh, the nominated members to take oath before the elected members. So all of that, uh, uh, you, you know, of course, is something that has that been a major right. political standoff between the Amadi Party and the BJP. It remains to be seen what actually happens today. All right, uh, Vedan, thanks so much for joining us with those details.
Now, the other big story this morning, the Supreme Court is all set to get five new judges, taking its strength to 32 against the sanctioned strength of 34. Today, three Chief Justices, Justice Pankaj Mithal, Justice Sanjay Karol and P.V. Sanjay Kumar, all uh, of high courts of uh, Rajasthan, Patna and Manipur respectively will take oath alongside two other senior high court judges. Now, all the five names for the judgeship in the top court were recommended by the six-member Supreme Court Collegium on December 13th last year. The centre on Saturday finally notified the appointment of the five judges. Uh, this a day after the Supreme Court had, in fact, expressed displeasure over the inordinate delay in the appointment of judges. On January 31st, the Supreme Court Collegium recommended two more names for elevation as top court judges, Allahabad High Court Chief Justice Rajesh Bindal and the Gujarat High Court Chief Justice Arvind Kumar. So today at 10.30, there will be the appointment the swearing-in ceremony of the five new judges of the Supreme Court. Let's go across to Sunil now for more. And Sunil, so finally uh, today, uh, the swearing-in ceremony to take place. And uh, this was delayed. And uh, we also, uh, you know, had reported about how the Supreme Court had expressed its displeasure over the delay. That's right. Uh, this uh, decision of uh, appointing the five judges comes in the backdrop, of course, uh, of a lot of back-channel talks that have taken place between the government and the judiciary. Uh, though this will never be officially stated, uh, the fact that the two uh, names uh, were uh, recommended once again uh, 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 paved the way for the appointment of these five judges uh, so as to ensure uh, that the full, uh, once of course it's cleared by the, uh, uh, by the government, uh, the Supreme Court will have its full strength. But the real key issue is actually on, an, uh, on another point, and that is the reiteration of uh, judges uh, in particular... Uh, uh, Justice Saurabh Kripal uh, and another uh, four other judges which uh, really uh, created uh, this entire uh, controversy and it's still pending. Uh, there has been no word uh, from the government on that reiteration. It's an extremely complex issue. Uh, just not only uh, Mr. Kripal, uh, there are other two uh, judges from the uh, Calcutta High Court as well as the one from the Mumbai High Court and another the reiteration uh, from the Bangalore uh, uh, Karnataka High Court. So uh, we have definitely uh, huge issues uh, pending in terms of reiteration of the appointment of judges. This, of course, uh, is a starting point, but we'll have to wait and see how things play out in the next few days. All right, uh, Sunil, thanks so much for joining us uh, with those details. So there you can see uh, the uh, details of the five judges who will be appointed to the Supreme Court today. Let's get you news now from Assam, where it was a third day of the massive crackdown on child marriages that began on Friday. Although the number of people being arrested has drastically uh, came down on Sunday, but the chief minister of Assam has made his mandate clear. He aims to make Assam child marriage free by 2026, the year the assembly uh, goes to the next assembly polls. This despite women in rural areas protesting outside police stations. Ratadeep Chaudhary reports. <laughs> Massive protests by women outside police stations in Assam's Dhubri and Morigaon districts. Days after the state police started cracking down on child marriages, arresting over 2,000 people across the state and filing 4,000 plus criminal cases. The highest arrests are in the Bishwanath, Dhubri, Barpeta, Kokrajhar and Hojai districts. Protesting women say the arrests have left them helpless with nowhere to go.
But Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma has said the clampdown against child marriages in the state will continue. This despite opposition leaders slamming the Assam government and calling its actions biased. देखिए ना कि ये पिछले छः साल से बीजेपी की सरकार है वहाँ पर और छः साल में उन्होंने क्या किया इस बारे में तो ये इनकी नाकामी है दूसरा ये कि आपने कितने स्कूल खोले वो बताइए तीसरा ये है कि जब आप इन पर एक्शन ले रहे हैं तो जिन लड़कियों का विवाह हो गया निकाह हो गया या शादी हो गई जिस किसी धर्म के मुताबिक उन उन लड़कियों का क्या होगा और ये जो आसाम में बीजेपी की सरकार है वो मुसलमानों के खिलाफ है बायस है यू सी इन आसाम साइल मैरिज इज रैम्पन सो टूडे वी हैव अरेस्टेड मोर देन टू थाउजेंड पीपल फॉर मेरिंग गर्ल बिलो एटीन ईयर्स ऑफ एज और ये चलते रहेगा दो हजार छब्बीस तक हम आसाम से ये साइल मैरिज कम्प्लीटली खत्म कर दूंगा In this massive crackdown, Assam Police is investigating into over 4,000 FIRs of child marriages, and in this, more than 8,000 people have been named as accused. Of them, in the first phase of the crackdown, police is looking for at least 3,500 people, but top police officials have told that many of them have already absconded. In Guwahati, Ratnadeep Chaudhary, Findi TV. The Mamta Banerjee led uh, Trinamool Congress and veiled its manifesto in Agartala on Sunday afternoon. And this comes a day before uh, Mamta Banerjee arrives in the northeastern state to kick off her party's campaign. But the party has declared 22 candidates for the upcoming polls. The Trinamool Congress manifesto reflects its governance model in West Bengal with a focus on welfare and social upliftment. Several successful schemes in Bengal have been included in the manifesto uh, where the party is contesting on its own terms. Now news uh, from Bengal and another BJP MLA in West Bengal switched sides and joined the Trinamool Congress as the BJP faces desertion as several MLAs have left the party since its defeat in the 2021 assembly elections and hopped over to the ruling Trinamool on Sunday another BJP MLA jumped ship joining the Trinamool sparking off a debate over the anti defection law Suvendu Adhikari's tweet on the anti defection law after the switch saw the Trinamool question uh, Mr Adhikari on his stance on Sisir Adhikari, his father, and the Biendu Adhikari, his brother, both of whom are members of parliament elected on Trinamool tickets, but are for all practical purposes uh, with the BJP now. There you can see that tweet by Suvendu Adhikari. Let's go across to Saurabh now for more. And Saurabh, so in Bengal, uh, the BJP facing uh, this uh, situation of uh, members leaving the party and joining the Trinamool, and there they're raising this issue of uh, the anti desertion law. That's right. You know, I mean, the Trinamool uh, responded sharply to Suvendu Adhikari's take after Shuman Kamjilal, uh, an MLA from in Alipurduar, joined the BJ uh, joined the Trinamool Congress. Now, Shuman Kamjilal, of course, is uh, uh, someone who met Abhishek Banerjee, the Trinamool's National General Secretary, and then, of course, uh, uh, the Trinamool made the announcement that uh, you know that he does not have faith in. Particularly targeting Suvendu Adhikari. Now, uh, Suvendu Adhikari hit back saying, "Why wasn't he given a Trinamool flag? Are you scared of the anti-defection law?" To which the Trinamool responded, saying, "Please explain the anti-defection law to your father and your brother, who are MPs." Now, uh, obviously, after Suvendu Adhikari left the Trinamool before the 2021 Assembly election and joined the BJP, uh, his political purposes have been defying party whips and. You know, siding with the BJP on all uh, matters within the house. In the Trinamool has also written to the Lok Sabha Speaker to disqualify Mr. Sushil Adhikari. The Speaker hasn't acted on that yet. All right, uh, sort of. They're uh, talking about this latest desertion. This uh, latest uh, member of the BJP who uh, quit and has joined the Trinamool.
In other news now, floor leaders of like-minded opposition parties will meet at 9.30 this morning to decide a joint strategy to take on the government over the Hindenburg report. Members of opposition parties to jointly protest, in fact, near the Gandhi statue uh, this morning ahead of uh, parliament demanding a joint uh, parliamentary committee or a Supreme Court monitored probe into the Hindenburg report on the Adani group of companies. Speaking in Maharashtra, Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh Chief Mohan Bhagwat on Sunday said that God created everyone equal and that priests are the ones who created castes and sects. He said God has always said that everyone is equal for him and there is no caste or sect for him. It was made by priests, which is wrong. Our RSS chief's comments have come amid a political storm stirred by Swami Prasad Maurya, a prominent OBC leader in Uttar Pradesh, who claimed that certain verses of the Ram Charit Manas insult a large section of society on the basis of caste and demanded that these be banned. With that time for us to sip into a short break, more news on the other side. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Bharatiya Rashtra Samiti, the new and national avatar of Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao's TRS, held its first rally outside Telangana in Maharashtra's Nander. The rally was held by Mr. Chandrasekhar Rao and marked a new step in the Telangana Chief Minister's national ambitions after a mega rally in Telangana itself last month. Yeah, but. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao, who has renamed his party for his national ambitions, starting his journey with the BRSS first rally outside Telangana in Maharashtra's Nandir, which is across the border and has a chunk of Telugu-speaking population. On the national stage, Mr. Rao and his party coined the slogan, Abki Bar Kisan Sarkar, a pitch to farmers across India. जनता को जीतना चाहिए वो किसानों को जीतना चाहिए हमारे समस्याओं का वही समाधान है इस देश में सरकार किसने चलाया 75 साल में ज्यादा से ज्यादा समय 54 साल 54 इयर्स कांग्रेस ने हुकूमत की इस देश में 16 साल नंबर दो स्थान पे भाजपा हुकूमत किया the BJP has said KCR's national plans will fizzle out, but the BRS says they are looking at pan-India groups like farmers' bodies, trade unions and civil society groups, where KCR's party may have more traction and present an alternative welfare development and political agenda. <laughs> उधर गवर्नमेंट अच्छा चल रहा है अपने महाराष्ट्र में आज तक किसी ने गवर्नमेंट ने चावल फ्री नहीं दिया और सस्ता नहीं दिया सो से से केसीआर इज आल्सो प्लानिंग अ ग्रैंड मीटिंग इन दिल्ली इन द नेक्स्ट फ्यू वीक्स एज अ शो ऑफ यूनिटी अमंग नॉन बीजेपी नॉन कांग्रेस पार्टीज एंड वांट्स टू इनवाइट बंगाल्स ममता बनर्जी बिहार्स नीतीश कुमार बिसाइड्स द लीडर्स हु हैव ऑलरेडी बीन ऑन स्टेज विद हिम इन द लास्ट फ्यू मंथ्स with Kanahiya Khandelwal and Uma Sudhir, Usama Shah for NDTV. Hello and welcome. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Gargi Rawat. Uh, let's take you, let's get you all the latest news. And first up, news from Delhi, where a third attempt to pick the mayor of Delhi and six standing committee members is expected today. Two earlier attempts had failed amid clashes between the BJP, which controlled the civic body for 15 years, and Amadi Party, which has dislodged them. The election was stalled twice, first on January 6th, over the question whether the 10 members nominated by the lieutenant governor are allowed to vote and then on 
on January 24th due to sudden adjournment by the presiding officer claiming a non-order of the House. Now, while Arvind Kejriwal's Amadmi party will win the mayor post given its numbers, its situation will be precarious over the election of the standing committee understood to be the most powerful body in the corporation. Now, already there are indications that the AAP suspects that uh, perhaps even today uh, the mayor may not be uh, chosen uh, the, uh, and you had Manish Chachoria Tweeting a short while ago, the BJP has instructed its councillors not to allow the mayoral election to be held again. In the MCD meeting today, BJP councillors have been told to create ruckus on any pretext as soon as the house starts. Well, let's go across to Vedant now for more. And uh, Vedant, so once again, uh, the Aam Adni, now this is just an allegation, obviously, uh, this is what Manish Shishodia has tweeted, according to him. But again, fears uh, in, in the Aam Adni party that uh, the, maybe the Delhi mayor will not be elected today as well. That's right, Gargi. In fact, the BJP is uh, set to address a press conference shortly. Uh, in fact, I come to you from the Ahmadi Party headquarters where all the elected councillors, in fact, have gathered here and they will be strategizing as to what, uh, uh, you know, their approach will be uh, when uh, the, the MCD House convenes today. So, of course, uh, remember the politics over the post of mayor and deputy mayor continues because I remember, as you rightly mentioned, the Ahmadi Party says that the BJP has instructed all its elected councillors to in a sense create ruckus in the house shortly after it convenes so that the mayor is not elected even today. So that's what of course uh, the Amani Party's allegation is the BJP will be responding to that in just a short while from now. And uh, remember what the issue actually is for our viewers outside Delhi. Remember, the Aam Aadmi Party has secured a comfortable majority as far as the MCD House is concerned. But the BJP has said that the elections to the post of mayor and deputy mayor, they are an open house. So they will, of course, be contesting those as well. Now, the past uh, two times when the MCD House was convened, there was ruckus over members, over nominated members, essentially. These are older men. They are essentially people who have expertise in certain fields and they are nominated to the MCD House. Now, according to the DMC Act, the Delhi Municipal Corporation Act, Act, these nominated members do not have the right to vote uh, in the elections to the post of mayor and deputy mayor. Now, the, the Amadi party says that because the LG, in a sense, has uh, surpassed quote unquote and bypassed uh, the elected gov uh, government in terms of appointing the temporary speaker to the house to oversee uh, the, the elections, in terms of appointing the nominated members without consulting the state government, the Amadi party suspects that these nominated members will also influence the voting of the uh, mayor and deputy mayor as well. Uh, so of course that is really the flashpoint between the Ahmadi party and the BJP. The BJP maintains that uh, the LG does not have to in a sense consult the elected government to appoint nominated members and it also maintains that these nominated members will not cast their votes uh, as per the DMC Act in, the, in these uh, particular elections as well. So now it remains to be seen what happens today. Of course, ruckus is expected because, uh, remember, while the DMC Act clearly states that aldermen will not vote and are not allowed to vote as far as the elections are concerned, the politics over it continues. So, of course, uh, today also uh, ruckus is expected. And just yesterday, in fact, all the Ahmadi Party councillors wrote to the pro tem speaker demanding the debarment of uh, all the nominated members till the time the elections to the post of mayor and deputy mayor are complete. But, uh, of course, uh, the BJP will be responding to the Amani Party's allegation of, uh, you know, the BJP instructing its councillors to create ruckus, purposely, uh, you know, create ruckus in the house in just a short while from now. All right, uh, Vedan, thanks so much for joining us uh, with the latest there. In other news, the Supreme Court all set to get five new judges today, taking its strength to 32 against the sanctioned strength of 34. Today, three Chief Justices, Justice Pankaj Mithal, Justice Sanjay Karol and P.V. Sanjay Kumar of High Courts of Rajasthan, uh, Bihar and uh, Manipur respectively will take oath alongside two other uh, senior High Court judges. All the five names for the judgeship in the top court were recommended by the six-member Supreme Court Collegium on December 13th last year, the Center on Saturday notified the appointment a day after the Supreme Court had expressed displeasure over the inordinate delay in the appointment of judges. And on January 31st, the Supreme Court Collegium recommended two more names for elevation as top court judges, the Allahabad High Court Chief Justice Rajesh Bindal and Gujarat High Court Chief Justice Arvind Kumar. Well, let's go across to Sunil now uh, for more on this. And Sunil, so today, five more judges uh, for the Supreme Court taking the total strength to 32. That's uh, right, uh, Gargi, uh, and that's, of course, uh, 
uh, a lot of back and forth uh, has taken place between the government and the uh, judiciary, uh, even though it's not stated. Uh, the fact that they appointed two more uh, judges, uh, uh, you know, uh, you recommended two more judges, uh, have really set the ball rolling for those appointments of those five judges. But the crucial issue, of course, uh, remains the reiteration uh, that has taken place, for example, of uh, Mr. Saurabh Kripal uh, from the Delhi High Court, uh, as well as another four cases, uh, two uh, pending in uh, Calcutta, uh, another uh, one from Mumbai, as well as uh, one in uh, uh, Karnataka High Court. These are reiterations. Uh, we haven't heard from the government yet on that issue, uh, even though the recommendation has been made public and the explanation for why they have recommended them uh, have been put, even though the minister has said it's a matter of grave concern uh, that certain inputs that have been given uh, by the intelligence agencies have found, uh, uh, you know, verbatim in terms of the recommendation, I mean, in terms of the collegium's, uh, uh, you know, recommendation when they put it out. So uh, definitely all is still not well. Uh, there are certain transfers that have been pending uh, and uh, some people who are going to retire uh, soon and even they haven't been transferred. So even while the government makes that first effort and today they will be sworn in, uh, there is definitely a lot of friction between the government and the judiciary in terms of appointment. All right, Sunil, thanks so much for joining us uh, with that and that swearing in the ceremony to take place at 10.30 this morning. In other news, uh, floor leaders of like-minded opposition parties are meeting, uh, going to meet uh, shortly to decide a joint strategy to take on the government over the Hindenburg uh, report. Members of opposition parties will also jointly protest this morning near the Gandhi statue demanding JPC or a Supreme Court monitored probe into the Hindenburg report on the Adani group of companies. Well, let's go across to Arvind now for more. And Arvind, we remember uh, also in parliament, the opposition parties you know, creating a ruckus and demanding a uh, discussion on the Hindenburg report. So today, a meeting also taking place. Yeah, Gargi, the flow leaders of the like-minded opposition parties will be uh, meeting at around 9.30 a.m. at the office of leader of opposition in Rajasabha, Malik Arjun Kage, in order to decide on a joint strategy to take on the government over the Hindenburg report on Adani Group of Companies. So this will be the third meeting of the uh, portion uh, parties uh, inside uh, inside the parliament to, to, to devise or to come up with a joint uh, strategy over this issue. So uh, in the last two uh, meetings, opposition parties made sure that they will stand together and then uh, they will raise the demand for a joint parliamentary uh, probe into this particular case or a Supreme Court monitored probe. And that's why we saw in the last two days of the parliament, the, 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 the parliament, uh, there was no functioning, there was no business uh, that took place uh, in both the days inside uh, both the houses. But today, again, opposition parties are planning to up the ante wherein they want to take this uh, protest outside the house also. And that's where the opposition parties will be staging a protest near the Gandhi statue. So almost all the like-minded opposition parties, 16 to 17 opposition parties, will be joining this protest near Gandhi statue, uh, uh, demanding a joint parliamentary committee probe into this case or a Supreme Court monitored probe. Also, very importantly, what our sources are saying is that there seems to be some kind of uh, uh, division between the opposition parties because one section of the opposition parties feel that they should cooperate with the uh, motion of thanks to President Address so that because if, if they cooperate with the motion of thanks to President Address, in that particular scenario, Prime Minister will also have to make a statement, will will be making a speech on this on, on this motion and that's where the opposition parties are planning to corner the uh, Prime Minister seeking his answer over this or seeking his statement over this issue. But whereas uh, a section of opposition parties, including Congress, they don't want to cooperate with the proceedings at all because they don't want to settle for anything less than this JPC. That's why uh, there seems to be some kind of a division between the opposition parties which will be uh, cleared out in today's meeting that is scheduled at around 9.30 a.m. But the opposition parties have already uh, announced that they will be protesting near Gandhi statue at around 10 a.m. over this issue. All right. Thanks so much, Arvind, for joining us with that. So opposition parties meeting at 9.30 to decide on their strategy. They will have a better uh, intake of councillor staff. That is what they had promised, uh, saying that uh, by summer this year, uh, they will have a bigger staff to deal, first of all, with the heightened number of applications that they are receiving. So they are stressing on the point that the number of applications has gone up drastically and that is why uh, the number of uh, uh, staff that they had was not matching up to that level. Also because uh, a lot of staff during the COVID period was uh, let go off considering that uh, uh, they were not required. The numbers uh, of applications was not as high. Secondly, uh, for business visas, now they 
they are taking a very uh, new initiative and that is that uh, people who are applying for a business visa, they could be Indians who want to go to the US but they can apply uh, and choose uh, uh, some of the embassies abroad for their visas uh, and the, this is talking about the first time applicants those who are who've already had a visa to the u.s in the past many of them not all categories but many categories are also eligible for what is called the dropbox uh, application in that case because your biometrics are already with the u.s government therefore uh, you do not require to go for another biometrics uh, uh, appointment and therefore a dropbox uh, facility for them for such people is available so these are some of the core initiatives the most important at the moment being that for business visas which were again being delayed and uh, the fact that uh, businesses uh, can't wait people have conferences for that uh, this new facility uh, that uh, th that has come through is that they can apply to embassies abroad as well for instance if in uh, for instance in thailand uh, the queue is not very long they can apply there